Holy crap, there's a new Steam handheld. Let's take a look. Okay, let's flip over, see what we got. Uh, okay, yeah. So, let's look at the this announcement. We have an, Valve announces a Steam Deck handheld for PC games. So, going to be compatible with your entire Steam library. The most important thing to know is what's the hardware, what's it going to be able to run, what kind of issues. So, I thought I would forecast that a little bit. So, a little bit bigger than a Switch, 7-inch touchscreen, Thumbsticks. The thumbsticks seem a bit obtrusive. I'm kind of curious. It looks a little cramped with the button layout. Could still be okay. I'm curious how that will feel. Um, yeah, touch screen. It has two track pads, probably for mouse style games, increased precision, probably shooters and things like that. Um, but inside we got a new Zen 2 micro architecture. So it's one generation old is not Zen 3 and 3.5 gigahertz so that's pretty solid uh it doesn't say how many cores there are right here i'm guessing it's probably four uh eight seems like a lot for a handheld four is probably fine um and you have eight rdna2 compute units so let's see calculator so there's usually around so there's 64 shaders typically per compute unit so if we have eight compute units you're looking at about 512 shaders so it's like double the switch's amount of shaders, and you have four ROPs for each of the compute units, I believe. So that would put us at, let me see, uh, where was that? Eight, four times eight, so we're looking at 32 ROPs. So, well, that's, I mean, that's kind of interesting. So we're looking at, I mean, that's pretty lightweight for, for RDNA two. You usually have, what, 2,560 on the low end, 160 ROP. So I mean, it's it's pretty lightweight, but it's targeting 720p, right? So it's like a quarter or less of a 6700 XT, much less than that actually, more like a, a eight of it. So, um, but I mean, it's not it's not going to be pushing crazy resolutions. We're looking at something that's that on base format, it's more than double the switch. So this. Switch has 16 ROPs, so we're looking at 32, and 512 shaders when typically you have 256, not to mention the clocks are night and day different. So we have, sorry, where is that indie article? Okay, so we have 1.6 gigahertz uh, for the GPU. So 1.6 gigahertz will tell us our T-flops. So if we have, I mean, they tell us right here, 1.6, but how you get that number is usually 512 times two. So 512 we worked out as the number of shaders and then times your clock. So 1.6. So you're looking at 1.63 teraflops. So pretty accurate here. This is, I mean, a PS4 base is 1.8 teraflops, but I would imagine this would be slightly better than a PS4 portable for a couple reasons. So it's gonna be better than a PS4 portable because first of all, the native resolution is 720p. So it's running at like half the resolution of most PS4 games. And so that means that you have a pretty good chance of getting PS4 level graphics at 60 frames per second on this device. Pretty cool. I think that would be a great, great device, a great way to go about this. Um, and you would also get, so yeah, obviously there's advantages to the fact that it's on RDNA 2. I'm curious how many ROPs it need. It has. It wouldn't need a ton of ROPs because it's not pushing. ROPs come at the end of that that's what you use to build pixels in your pipeline so you need as many as are necessary for whatever resolution you're building so it's some it's why sometimes you don't see the ROP scale up as much as other things in the gpu so you see that the 6800 xt and the 6900 xt both have the same amount of ROPs. they both have 128 ROPs. yet the 6900 xt is much more powerful so the reason is because if you're imagining 4k right that's the amount of pixels that are going to be generated and that's what ROPs are going to be doing they're going to be turning things into pixels at the end of the pipeline so you don't need more than what you would have there so i'm curious because this is still probably a big jump i would guess it likely has 32 ROPs which would put it at double the amount of switch ROPs, not to mention the fact that the clocks are going to make those, those ROPs and those TMUs perform much better. You're going to lose some of it to the API overhead that you're typically going to get. It's going to, not going to be as low level as the switch, but just on brute force, you're going to have something pretty special here, I think. You're going to be able to play 
most every PC game here, somewhere between 30 and 60 FPS. Some like Rocket League, you'd probably be able to play much above that. But it doesn't make that big of a difference because the display of it is, sorry, the display of it is only um, 720p with 60, 60 hertz. So, um, oh, slightly higher than 720p. That's kind of odd that it's not, uh, its aspect ratio isn't a perfect 16 by 9, it's a 16 by 10. So a lot of games might have black bars on it. That's kind of cumbersome. Maybe some people want to have bars and stuff running on the bottom because I'm guessing this is going to be more or less a Windows machine. Um, but anyways, pretty cool device. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been kind of expecting Valve to make a move like this in a while, for a while. I was expecting it to be um, basically some kind of hybrid AMD thing. You're going to be using the, the new voltage setup that they have in all of the AMD APUs. So it's pretty, it's going to be pretty power efficient, I would guess. And I'm curious if, if the clocks are perfectly stable, um, that it's perfectly, no, it says it tops out. So you're going to have a fluctuating CPU and GPU clock would be my guess. It might be specially tuned to target maintaining the GPU clock and giving up a little bit of CPU cycles wherever is necessary. I don't know. I'd love to actually take a look at a profile of it when it comes out and see if it actually maintains these clocks. The fact that it, it will be more PC-like hardware, this is going to be an easier thing to test to see um, the, the diagnostics on it, where it goes up, where it goes down, how it runs. Um, pretty cool. I mean, I have a massive Steam library, so I'm kind of excited to see what this thing can do. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I should say about this. So 16 gigs of RAM doesn't differentiate whether it's, you know, uh, LPDDDR4 or whether it's um, GDDR in there. I'm hoping it's 16 gigs of GDDR. That'd be pretty good for a handheld. Um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, those are kind of my initial thoughts. I think it'll be pretty good. Should should run most of the entire Steam library right now at a reasonable clip should have a good time with it. I'm definitely hoping to get one and test it when it comes out. So if you want any more kind of deep dives, it's like, I mean, if I was to go a little bit deeper, so we're looking at probably something. I mean, the fact that it's base performance is around PS4, but not quite because it has all of the RDNA 2 advantages. I mean, if we look at, I'm curious, if we looked at the makeup of a PS4, just real quick. Okay, so down here, if we look at the makeup of a PS4, with base PS4, right here. So 32 ROPs, 72 TMUs, and 1152 shaders. I'm just curious whether or not the, um, I mean, the clocks are much higher because the original PS4 is clocked at 800 megahertz. Oh yeah, it was clocked at 800 megahertz, I didn't. So it was clocked at 800 megahertz. So basically half the ROPs will perform twice as well same with half of the tmus so the fact that we're looking at probably 32 tmus running at double the clocks means that in that regard it should be close to similar to it but it's running at half the resolution remember so the fact that it's running at half the resolution it might have a lot more memory bandwidth so you might not get as much uh, memory bandwidth stuttering and stuff so there's some advantages there um yeah i mean i wish i had someone to bounce off of with this but i think that this is a pretty cool, it's going to be a pretty cool product. I'm looking forward to testing it out. So anyways, those are my thoughts on the Steam handheld. Except Expect something kind of two times to three times base PS4 performance, which is a pretty decent place to start for a handheld. And I'm curious to see how long the battery will last and whether some kind of games uh, are heavier on certain resources. It'll be actually a great test to see how... Um, how the ROPs are pushed versus the TMUs versus the shaders on this specific thing because we might see some bottlenecks in certain types of games might have issues with explosions or whatnot with bandwidth or 